What's up guys, today we're going to be doing something completely different. We are going to be going through cinematics in Unreal and more importantly, log footage and how to get it out of Unreal so that we can grade it better in DaVinci or Prem or any of these other editing softwares, I guess. So the first thing we need is an Unreal project, obviously. So I have a project here from something that I got a long, long time ago. And I thought this would be a great example to use, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is go into our edit plugins. You might already have this installed. A lot of the newer versions of Unreal do, and I'm on Unreal 5.3.2. Uh, so the first thing we need to search for is open color, open color IO. This is gonna be the thing that helps us like change color spaces and change all that kind of stuff, right? So as soon as we've got that, it might prompt you to restart. Like I said, a lot of the newer versions of Unreal have this already, so you shouldn't have that problem, like potentially like that kind of issue, but you know, it's good to have it just in case. So after that, we're gonna need to download the open color config, you know, because how can you do it? if you don't have anything to back it up. So I'm gonna put it on the thing now on the screen. I'm gonna put a link to it in the comments and I'll probably just also just flash like here. Um, but yeah, it's a GitHub repository with a zip file that basically will have our color configs. So yeah, download this, extract it to somewhere you're not gonna delete, ex extract it to somewhere that's persistent um, you know, because if you keep wanting to come back to this and exporting these shots in a different kind of color space or something, if you put this in like your downloads that you clear, you're going to have to constantly be downloading it. So I've put it in my E drive, which is just one of my separate drives that are like not my root drive, but it can go anywhere as long as it's somewhere, you know, you're not going to delete. Right. So once we've downloaded that, we go back into unreal. And this is where the magic starts, I like to say. I do already have a config from just a test to make sure that it still worked before. Uh, so I'll delete that now and we'll run through it together. So the first thing you need to do is right click, go to miscellaneous and then open color IO configuration. Now, as you can see, that's an asset to manage color spaces, right? So we're going to call this log config. You can name it whatever you want but I'm gonna call it that because it's our config to help us get to lock. So the first thing we're greeted with is a configuration file. So we're gonna instantly just double click that. If you see that little three dots, and you'll see, like I said, it's in my E drive. It's, it's, it's a big storage hard drive that, granted, I should probably clean up every now and again, but I'm not gonna delete stuff on it, especially stuff like this, because I know it's what I use. So we are looking for config.ocio. So we click that and click open. You can also just double click it and that's fine. Um, and the next thing we have is these. You don't really need to touch display views, to be honest, because you can do that manually anyway. And I will show you guys how to do that. So the things we're looking for are desired color spaces. I'm going to add three, but I will only use two. I'll use three just for a bit of an example. Right, so you're instantly met with these when you click add and you use this little drop down. You have aces, which I think is, I always get this wrong, aces, uh, sorry, it's academy, color, something. I should know, but I always forget. So you have all of the aces things here. You have a bunch of input LUTs, which is your, you know, your ARRI LUTs, basically your log, your log kind of LUT kind of stuff. They're the kind of things you'll find here, which we will be using. For this test, we're just gonna be using slog free, which is as gamma free, uh, because that's the one that I'm sort of comfortable with. I mainly have a lot of Sony cameras. Um, granted, this is 8-bit, so I don't really do much slog free grading on that because it probably wouldn't go well. Um, but anyway, yeah. slog free is the thing we're going to be using. We're also gonna have Rec 709, just because it's a standard color space for a lot of output media. Unreal allows you to actually switch. So I'm going to have sRGB as my output. 
and you can see I have these now by default I believe it's sRGB but I think you can change it to rec 709 in settings so if I close this now so if you've got once you've got these feel free to close it save your project and if you jump into project settings for just a sec and you search for I believe it's going to be no you can see that it's actually interchangeable and you can change it to many different color spaces if they're what you want to work in you know I shouldn't have done that because now I need to re restart but because I'm not actually doing anything you know I'm not gonna restart you can technically change all of these if you want to make your own sort of custom color space, but I'm going to stick with sRGB. Um, and here we are. So the next thing you guys need is a level sequence. I've already got one. I'll jump it in and I'll show you guys. It's just a really basic little push for this little guy standing by this little house, you know? But if you wanted to think in Unreal, oh, what does this look like, you know? What does this look like in in log, you know? Come over here, OCIO, dragging it down from lit. Enable your display. It's annoying because you have to go back into it, but you go select, log config. I'm actually gonna click restart later on that because it's just there. And now that we have this, we can go, okay, I wanna show it from sRGB to log, uh, to log even. And you can see, while it's not perfect, and it's gonna look even less perfect because my monitor and everything you see will be sRGB or Rec 709. But as you can see, it's really flattened out the image and it's really, it's a good profile, especially for just previewing in this regard, what the log footage equivalent of this would look like. So I'm gonna disable it because I know that I'm happy with it and all that. Um, and the way that we're going to get this out of Unreal as that is basically by using a conversion at runtime. So we're going to go into Cinematics Movie Render Queue. If it's not there, you'll have to go into your plugins and search for Media Render Queue, which will come up here. Oh, sorry, it's Movie Render Queue, not Media. Um, and then it'll bring this up. I think you do have to restart your PC. So something I always do, let me disable that. Something I always do is always, I guess this is just personal preference. I also use this because this prompts you to restart as well. And this allows you to export in ProRes, which I like to do with my log files because it's just sort of nice you can get nice 12 bit exports through 444xq and then you're in a good spot so once you've got them and you've restarted and you've got your level sequence and you're ready to go you just drag it in and then you can click here in your settings and it says jpeg now this isn't going to be a movie render queue tutorial because that would go on for way too long right but basically there's so many settings here that you can go through we are just interested in our Apple ProRes 12-bit 444XQ, which is the biggest that can go. So that's the best if we're going for something like extreme color grading or something like that. So we have as much data as possible. Um, and then we just really need to click color output. And you can see here we have our little configuration stuff. So we had to tick is enabled. We had to add our config. And we have to say our transform source. So our source is what it's coming from. So we're gonna export it out as an like in working. We're working at sRGB. Our destination is what we want it to be converted to. So we want this to be a slog free like export basically, right? So that's what we do, and that's how we set it up. And after that, the rest is pretty much just simple. We go we just save it to where we want. So I'm going to save it to my documents. So I'm going to go color video. No, I'll call it log video, right? And then I can get rid of frame number because we are now doing a .mov ProRes export. We don't calculate frames. We just calculate one video. Um, I'll make this 2160p as well, just to get generic 4K. It's at 24 frames a second. 
uh, I'm going to just click save and then we're good to render. So a good thing to always check as well as here before you render, because sometimes if you open a sequence in a different map, it might not load correctly. But again, this isn't going to be a movie render tutorial. I'm just going through some things that I end up dealing with sometimes at work and some things that, you know, could be a lot better. So when we're done and we're ready, we click render local. You can do render remote, but render local is generally easier. Render remote works a lot better if you've got like a local or even digital like render farm. So you can do stuff like that. This might take a while, so I may cut this uh, until we get to the next stage. Okay, so now we are in DaVinci, where we are going to be doing the grading of this like video. I'm not, I'm putting out there now, I'm not going to be actually like grading the video um, because I'm still very much learning how to grade properly. But all I'll be doing in this is basically just showing you guys how simple it'd be to put like a a lot or something similar on, right? So we drag this in and you can sort of see, okay. Um, it's, it's nice. It's a nice little moving shot. It's, you know, Super 35 anamorphic. It's probably is like Bately cinematic as you can get. But you go to this and you're, this is your color page. If you're familiar with Da Vinci, you know, you, you probably know you probably know a lot more about this than me. I'm just really getting into color grading at this point, which is why I thought I'd make this tutorial because I was looking for something similar um, and there weren't any tutorials. So I thought, hmm, there's somewhere to go. So you can add nodes, obviously for doing different stages of your grade or different areas. So you can do that with either right clicking and then add node and then a corrective is a basic one, but you have all these different ones or you can just click Alt and S and then you can add them as you please. So again, this is not a color grading tutorial or a DaVinci tutorial. It's just certain little things that can make your life editing a lot easier. So the first thing we need is just to get our number one. So basically our first ever touch. And you can try with like different looks and stuff if you really want to. But you can sort of just instantly see, right? Like. We just need to find the right LUT that you'll have. I'm going to use one of the Sony LUTs. I want to put a link to it in the description. I'm not going to flick it here because it's silly. I'll put a link to it in the description so that you guys can see it and so that you guys can download them because I believe you can get the LUTs off that website. But yeah, I'll put a link to the website you can download them all off of. And then it's a good base, right? It's a good base because Grading from just this is very daunting, especially if you're quite new. So using like a lot can really help. I mean, that's very like deep, but I quite like that. And even though, as you can see, these LUTs aren't actually like SLG3 to this, it's like SLG3 Cine. You know, as you can see instantly, if I just disable the grade and put it back on, you can see the difference that's made instantly. And then you'd go into your different kinds of grades. Like if I wanted to raise the highlights a little bit, I could just boost the highlights. You know, you'd then do that kind of stuff from here. But I'm not going to touch any of that because that's not part of the video. If you wanted to see a part of that video, let me know and I'll work on getting it done for you guys. So that's pretty much it as far as log footage from Unreal guys. I know it's not it's not technically like 100% log footage because Unreal works in sRGB or X709 by default and then it's getting converted to log. But I still think it works a lot better to grade than just using sRGB because it still gives you a lot more flexibility. I might work and see if I can find a way with the custom to try and make that look as close to log as possible. And if I do, I'll make a video on that. But if you guys have any more like things you guys want to know in terms of this kind of area of Unreal or even just gen generic Unreal, I mean, I do game dev as well as like cinematics, you know, so I could maybe make some tutorials on stuff to help. In that regard, you know, just drop a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see, and let me know if this guys, if this has helped you guys. Um, 
yeah don't forget to subscribe smash that like button and i will see you lovely people next time